Well, we are back from lunch. It is still October 24th. It's 2 o'clock. Partners meeting for Service Bureau of Reclamation, Bureau of Land Management, BES, uh, NRCS, USDA, DES, said twice, and FWP. And uh, decision. So we don't necessarily have a decision. We just add that just in case. So welcome, guys. Um, Basically, we'll just do it again. This is Corey's brilliant idea of sharing <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> so, thanks for coming. Appreciate that. I think these are good meetings. Well, thanks for hosting them. You're mm -hmm. welcome. You're welcome. So, who wants to go first? He's all getting over whatever. All right. Very good. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, some of the stuff, well, let's kind of start off, I guess, with the, the reservoir and where it's at right now. Currently, there's 1,484,000 uh, acre feet of water in the reservoir. That's about 78% full. Um, you know, it's early in the year, but uh, we're, we're still forecasting the reservoir to fill. I think there's only been two uh, years that the reservoir hasn't filled um, since the dam was built. Uh, some of the other projects that we've been working on uh, this year around the reservoir is uh, out there at uh, White Earth. We went and uh, did a bunch of work. I don't want to necessarily call it rehabbing, but um, making the, the campsites a little better, making the approaches. We put some uh, um, gravel down with kickouts for fire rings and tables, make it uh, more accessible and nicer, and also kind of delineate campsites a little bit better for people. We also uh, moved the road as you uh, go past the boat ramp and go around that loop, the, the reservoir, well the soil there the, was eroding back. So we put up a fence uh, this spring to early summer and uh, then this fall we uh, went ahead and moved that road over to get it away from that ledge. So we did that, um, modified a bunch of campsites, um, we also took some rocks there where they uh, parked the boats and boat trailers, moved that back, moved those rocks back so we could give a little bit more uh, maneuverability in that area so the vehicles don't, aren't crowding the road so much. So just uh, been doing a bunch of work out there. Um, the Montana Conservation Corps, we've been working them pretty hard. They helped out with those projects. They've also been doing a lot of uh, fence work and building out there around uh, Goose Bay, Confederate, um, just, uh, it's been a busy year. And so. I think the entire east shore from, uh, I think it's right, from Hellgate down to Confederate has been uh, not necessarily refenced, but the fence has been fixed along that stretch, whatever that is, 15 miles or whatever. So, they're going through uh, last year and this year. Uh, continuing on what Brian was saying, we did get a road maintenance contract in place. Some of the roads, specifically in Broadwater County, we're going to be touching this year. Or we're going to try to touch this winter. If not, it'll be for sure next spring. It's going to be Cottonwood. Wow. <laughs> Cottonwood's one of them. That, 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 wow, that's just amazing. It's like the crater to the moon there or something. And Indian Creek. Uh, you're, talk, you're talking about going into the campground? Yeah, okay. Cottonwood yeah. there, uh, Indian Road campground, and our portion of the road entering White Earth, up and over the hill basically, mm -hmm. that last hill, mm -hmm. that's basically ours. Get rid of the, the, the washboard in there. Mm -hmm. You guys have any extra money? You can get Corey. <laughs> hey, we maintain roads. Yeah. The other one that's kind of half and half between you, between Broadway Rose Clark is uh, the Hellgate. That one will get get bladed too. So uh, it's going to be. Since we didn't have a whole lot of road maintenance done last year, and the contract took so long to get through. We're going to be playing catch up for a couple of years, but uh, once we get caught up, it'll be fairly easy. Trying to get you know, other contracts in place for gravel supply and stuff like that, room mix to help us maintain the roads. As of tomorrow, all the courtesy docks will be gone from Canyon Ferry Reservoir. Uh, the 
contracting is in place that you know, in another week it's going to hit the streets and they get a month to give us proposals. And then uh, that will close out 1st of December, hopefully awarded by the first week of January, and they can start, well they got, there's a laundry list of submittals they got to do for the paperwork. But then after that they can start construction. And uh, basically all of them's going to be the same. You know, all the docks will be the same. Right? Mm -hmm. but, uh, transition ramps are a lot lighter. Uh, these things adjust in the water up to 18 foot max. Now I don't, we don't know yet until we get them here and, and look at the different ramps and how these boat docks are applicable to different steepness of ramps and stuff like that. There's a lot of things that go into it. But anyways, the idea is you put it in the water once, you don't touch it all year. Now, that's probably a wishful thinking. We probably will have to touch, you know, adjust them once or twice a year, whatever, three times, just to help out with how much is sitting on the ramp and how much is actually in the water. But that's the theory is you put them in the water once and you, mm. you don't touch them again until you have to take them out in the fall. So each different campground and each different boat ramp due to their own at different slopes and steepnesses and everything. And some areas of reservoir are more shallow than others. It's, it, each one's going to be a different animal to play with. Until we figure it out. It might take a couple years. And once we figure it all out, we say, okay, if you, you stick it in in April, you adjust it in May, you adjust it in July, you adjust it again in just before Labor Day, and everybody should be good. I don't know what the call is going to be for each one, but that's, that's what we're looking at. Will you guys do that adjusting? It depends on where the yeah. uh, courtesy boat docks are at. Okay. If it's something that a concessionaire operates, they'll, they'll be responsible for doing it. If it's something that we operate, we'll be responsible for doing it. Okay. And All basically, right. yeah, we're going to supply the, the new boat docks, and whoever is, is taking care of that particular campground. Because our guys, I know, already are going to have two or three of them. They're going to have Shannon, Shannon Hellgate, or Shannon, yeah, Shannon Hellgate, and White Earth. The White Earth will be a new one too. Uh, these are these docks are basically six foot wide and sixty foot long. And they come in twenty foot sections. So, it'll be a longer, longer boat ramp than what you had, and a bit wider. So instead of having two at the main boat ramp at, at silos, there's going to be one there. Could fit two, but then you're going to get congested with vehicle traffic back and down and stuff like that. It's going to, it might become a mess. So okay. you best to go one right in the middle. It's two foot wider than the old ones, a lot longer. And with the slips and silos being where they're at and how they fell over, I don't know, we'll have to find out the right position for that dock once it comes here, or once we get it delivered. With the, the new dock being wider, will it decrease the number of ramps there are for people to get boats in and out? So right now there's three, so you can have three trucks and boats in the Yeah, you yeah, only, yeah, you're gonna be down there. We took out the two metal ones in the main ramp, mm -hmm. and you only get one in their place. But like I said, they are two foot wider. You'll be able to back down each side of this one, plus along the side of the, the white plastic one that's there that goes down to the, the slips. Mm -hmm. So you'll still be probably able to fit three vehicles in there, two sides of that. Okay. One, it's going to depend on the width of the truck, the width of the boat, how good the drivers are backing stuff down. You know, there's going to be a lot of variables in there. But, yeah, we're just going to have to go with one boat dock place two there. And then your north ramp, we'll get one. The, the ramp in the camping loop north, and then if you go two loops to the south, there's another concrete ramp, and that'll get one also. Okay. There, there are going to be plenty of places to launch here. It's just, uh, it might not all be at the main at the main ramp. And that's a good thing, too. You guys know how congested it gets yeah. there at the main ramp. To be able to spread people out will be a good thing. Yeah, and those camping, right or bringing our boats and camping in them south loops and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think there's a turtle go with did you guys, the silos, uh, boat docks, did you guys, did you guys own those?
the ones that you emailed me on? Yes, yeah. uh, apparently we do. Okay. No one else. Everybody else well, saying they are, they are. They say they are. They are. Our guys, I, I, our way back, and they, well, we know we turned management over to BOR, but we well, don't know for sure if we turned the docs over or who owns the docs. I just went to <laughs> default and said, okay, they're ours. Well, two of them are in real bad shape anyway. Two of them. One at the main ramp, there was the deck you could see was all bent in, and then the other one at the south ramp. We got out when they got pulled out of the water. All the framing was bent and everything. It was just a matter of timing before that would collapse on somebody too. So mm -hmm. they're they're already probably being melted down at this time, right now, except for that <laughs> last one. So do you guys have any questions for us? No. no. Um, Bring you more often. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just show up once every six months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Winter and summer. Yeah. yeah there you go. Um, you no, know, we did have to postpone the um, management, uh, not management, the um, the grant for the marketing mm -hmm. plan that Al put together to Wednesday if you guys are available. We don't have a time yet, um, but we'll get that to you as soon as we do. This Wednesday, come on. Yeah, if you guys are available, it'd be great if you could be here for the presentation. I know you've been involved with that project. Yeah. All, All right. right. Thank you. We'll try to have one of us here. All right, and what I'll do is just give you a quick email this afternoon as soon as we get the budget or the um, agenda for Monday figured out. And I'm just waiting on a call. Wednesday. Right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, but no, I'm just waiting on a call from Alan Brian to see what their schedules are and I'm trying to mesh it. So, is there a time that's best for you guys in the afternoon or morning? Probably the afternoon. Wednesday morning, we've got the uh, SAS. Yeah, Bryce is going to be here too, so. Yeah, so let me just make sure that, uh, yeah, Wednesday morning we've got a meeting. Okay. Clock, so. Okay. Got one of our engineers from Billings out. He wants to take a look at some stuff, so. All right, so any time in the afternoon works for you? Yeah. Okay, we'll get that to you today then. Okay. All right. That work for you? Uh, early afternoon work, like one. one that would work for me. One one thirty. Okay. Uh, yeah. About an hour? Mm -hmm. uh, no more than an hour. I'd say thirty minutes to an hour. Okay. Yeah, one one thirty to least. Okay. okay. Yeah. You already you already busy or something? I'm busy. Who's talking about you? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Late to one thirty. Okay. All right. I'll see if I can move that to one. No, we, we likes meetings. Don't let them fool you. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we'll keep him here all afternoon. You want us to take three or four hours, not just 30 minutes. Well, that'd be right up your alley. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did get word that the land acquisition is moving again. Um, he had just sent an update to his trust board, and National Park Service is working with your folks in D.C. on that. Um, and they're going to be getting back to us on the value of the property. So that's kind of what they're working on right now. Um, that's for the softball fields, the golf course, the 10 acres that used to be the county poor farm. Um, we are working on that project to actually take over ownership of the property from VOR, um, which has been a good project, I think. So, um, and then that's it, I, the safety, Visits, I think, have been excellent. So, thank you for um, those. That, there will be a report coming out here. Uh, let's say within, I don't know yet, I'm going to say two or three weeks. Okay. One of the, I think you were a part of the inspection that we had up there, the safety guys from uh, safety and mainly safety and ADA compliance and stuff like that, from region and from area office. Fourth of September. September. Yeah, September. the first part of September. Excellent. Franklin, you have anything? No, I don't think so. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So who's next? I'll go. All right. Um, as most folks are aware, pretty much all our hunting seasons are underway. General season opened on Saturday, so. Uh, 
Hunters rule will be out and about. Um, antelope season was already going ongoing as has been waterfowl and, and pheasants for a couple weeks now. Uh, game damage was, was pretty light pre-season. We only ended up doing one game damage hunt uh, in Broadwater County. Uh, prior to the start of the general season, we had a small one for antlerless mule deer down in the Beaver Creek area. Um, there south of Spokane Hills in, in Hunting District 380, just kind of right there by the White Earth, uh, uh, going into the White Earth area. That ended on the 16th. Um, we'll have to wait and see what the winter brings, what we end up doing game damage-wise uh, after the close of the, the general season. Um, we completed our uh, Pond 4 drawdown, which we initiated last summer. That got done this year. We're back in the process of of refilling the pond. It's take, took a little longer. It's taken longer than desired. Um, all our ponds were kind of lower than desired levels this fall to a combination of reasons. Uh, the, the pond four just haven't drawn down in that many surface acres. It takes a while to reseal that and, and get water back in. And, and the way that those ponds and dikes were constructed, they were constructed to be somewhat porous or whatever to keep those areas moist or whatever and but uh, when the reservoirs you know down lower than lower elevations in the ponds we lose a lot of water flow uh, through subsurface flow at the bottom of the ponds through the dikes or whatever and stuff like that and kind of between that and uh, as most of you are aware river flows were, were down quite a bit for you know late summer fall they finally started to come back up but that just uh, for quite a while, we just didn't have a whole lot of water coming into the, the canal system or whatever, but they're, they're finally starting to come back up and we've got pretty good flows coming in. But uh, Bond Ford probably won't get it, probably refilled until next year or whatever and stuff like that. But it's kind of a, they're all on a day by day basis looking better or whatever. Of course, uh, still have a few waterfowl hunters probably out there, but it seems like most folks go hunting season to hunting season once, uh, you know. They'll hunt waterfowl, then they go to antelope, then they go to deer and elk or whatever, except for the real diehard guys uh, and everything. We are going to be looking at uh, potentially doing a, a drawdown, a similar drawdown effort in Pond 3, once again primarily to try to achieve a carp kill and uh, you know promote submergent and emergent vegetation. Uh, I'll have to do an EA on that, but uh, we'll be looking at starting that mid to late next summer if everything goes goes well and once again uh, you know it takes about a year to uh, get the thing completed we did get a good carp kill in pond four uh, really didn't see the, the fruition of that until this spring or whatever we finally went out there and after you know we got the water levels low enough that the, the you know winter killed them you could see a lot of dead carp or whatever once that ice came off and everything like that um, also the don't remember the last time we, we had one of these, but just uh, we did do a chemical, an aquatic chemical herbicide application uh, for Eurasian water mill foil and curly leaf pond weed in the west side canal, and then just for curly leaf pond weed in the east side canal. We did do that back in June, and we, we had done an uh, EA uh, prior to doing that project and everything like that. The, the west side canal, most of it, we were able to get dry in conjunction with the pond four drawdown, but the, the upper end we get a, a, a combination of, we get some water leakage around the intake head gate and then just sub, subsurface flow just coming from the river, it keeps that upper stretch of the uh, west side canal, uh, keeps water in it, and so we're never able to totally get it dry. Um, started boundary fence uh, replacement on, on the Canyon Ferry this WMA this summer. I can't remember exactly how many uh, miles of fence we replaced, but that'll be an ongoing uh, project uh, uh, coordinating with BOR. I'm sure it'll take us uh, several years to get everything done. Uh, we'll also be working with BOR staff or on our new five-year cooperative assistance agreement that helps provide funding for management on activities on the WMA. The current agreement expired the uh, end of September or whatever, so we'll be, be working with them through the winter and everything on, on getting the new one in place. Um, I'll also be working on on getting the new uh, management plan for the Canyon Ferry WMA uh, done sometime this fall or end or winter, hopefully. Um, other than that, uh, I guess that's about all I, I got and everything. So. I think uh, for a 
management plan, uh, Terry told me this morning that uh, funding is designated for. What's that mean? The funding is designated for okay. the management plan. Yeah, okay. There's a few more hurdles to jump through with the contracting process but, and yeah. the agreement process, but yeah, it's, it's there. Otherwise. Okay. Yeah, the other thing, uh, hopefully we'll find out sooner or later related if we need to ask for uh, we're still waiting to hear back from DNRC. We've had a proposed uh, two small water impoundment projects over there in the Myers project and an associated uh, brood strip for pheasants. Um, that's all depending on getting uh, a change in water use permit from DNRC uh, to change from ag agriculture to basically wildlife or whatever and stuff where we've been uh, that's uh, hopefully here sometime in the next month or whatever and stuff like that. We'll find out uh, if we can do that. Under the last assistant agreement, we'd actually gotten $48,000 from the BOR to do that project. And we ended up, you know, never used, utilized that or whatever because we never got the go ahead to do the pro project. The EA and everything's done on the project if we, if we get the approval on the change in water use permit. But... Uh, uh, we got a letter from the DNRC finally this last summer, so the application was complete. They had all the information, and uh, from they had like 120 days then to make a decision, and they're they're rapidly uh, closing in on that deadline. So, like I say, hopefully sometime here in the next few weeks we'll finally hear it. So we've been waiting on that, rapidly closing in on three years now. So it's <laughs> it's been a while, <laughs> and everything. So. Thank you. Any questions? Anyone? Yeah, All right. Thank you. Corey or Scott? I'll defer to the gentleman from the Forest Service. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> gentleman might be a stretch. But, um, I'll just kind of go through a list of a few things. So an update on our ongoing forest plan revision process. Um, a heads up, the proposed action is uh, planned to be released the week of November 9th. And so that, that will be really the kind of first major stage, first major step in the actual NEPA process for that. Everything we've done in the last year or so has kind of been what we call, you know, pre-NEPA assessment work, the open, even the open houses, that was kind of helping us get to this point. Um, and so Bill's actually uh, spending a lot of time reviewing the proposed action. He's spending quite a bit of time tomorrow. Um, and then the plan is to have it released on uh, November 9th. We'll have a, an extended review period, but this will be the formal. This is when we're asking. We want formal comments um, back from the. Will that be what, 90 days? It's going to be a 90 day comment period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, boy, maybe it's. Maybe we chose 120. Now I can't remember. One or the other. I think it is 90 days. Yeah. Um, and. You know, this will be, you know, kind of when we have like a, you know, for example, we have the Cabin Village Vegetation Project, and we did the NEPA for that, and we released the proposed action for folks to comment on. Also, now we're releasing the proposed action for the forest plan. Um, and so we'll definitely want comments. You guys will get copies, the commission will get copies. Uh, and we're going to host another public open house probably sometime in the first part of January. So we'll give the community a good couple of months to, to review the plan, the, the proposed action. Um, and then we'll have an open house for people to come ask questions, they can provide uh, feedback. That, that will not be the point where we're like, bring us your comments. We'll want you just to send those through the normal um, formal process, but we'll have an open house sometime in the middle of January. Um, but as, as we've talked and I've said in the past, very forest plan is a very important document for us and, the, and for, all, for everybody, for the management of public lands, it is that overarching umbrella document that kind of says uh, where we're going to go and what we want to do and, the, and really the big push is the desired conditions you know what, what we want to see on that landscape um, it'll be a lot different looking than our current forest plan that's from 1986 so um, if you need some late night reading material there'll be several hundred of uh, pages to review here pretty soon um, so is that scheduled to be released like on election day? No, no. <laughs> day uh, the, the day after election day. So, um, sleeping aid. No, no. Uh, it, and like I said, it'll be sometime that you know a week. But it's important. It's an important deal for us. So as the agency. So, um, so that's that. 
Uh, not, I don't know if people care, but uh, we've got a couple of new employees in the Towns Ranger District. We have a new um, full-time permanent uh, minerals administrator. Her name is Carissa. Uh, she's a geologist, but her primary focus will be doing minerals administration. Uh, primarily on the Towns and District, she'll also be helping um, on the Helena, and then she'll be kind of helping um, even a, a smaller scale across the, the entire forest. But um, that's excited to have her on. The position's been vacant for uh, about six to eight months now. And was that Beth Eiley's old position? Or? No. Um, it was a gentleman named Kyle McGuire. Okay. It, uh, Beth was the forest program manager for oh, okay. geology. Okay. And this is a, an administrator, minerals administration. Job. So basically it's the position that um, we have a lot of various mining activities from, you know, small scale, notice and intent, bucket and shovel kind of operations to you know, backhoe digging in the creek or, you know, doing tunnel work in a, a mining shaft. Um, and so this position will oversee all those activities, which is great, make my life easier. But, um, and then also uh, another new employee, we hired a, um, you probably saw the outreach for it this summer, but we hired a, a permanent seasonal front desk assistant. Um, her name is Melissa and she works six months out of the year. It'll be a position from uh, May through November. But that's good. It's another position that's been vacant for quite a while, so it's good to have the support. So it's some new faces in the office. Um, like Adam already said, uh, rifle season started yesterday. So for us, Forest Service, we, we do a lot of hunting patrols, uh, really just kind of get in touch with folks. Not anything to do with hunting regulations, but with camping, um, off travel use, use of trails, use of cabins, things of that nature. So we've got a few folks that are kind of out and about just trying to make contact with people. Um, and it, it seemed really busy this weekend as we chatted briefly, but it sounded like everything went pretty well, but it was just really busy, so um, which is good. It's a good thing. Um, heads up, we if we have some windows, and it looks like next week, couple of weeks, it'll be a little drier, um, but this time of year, we're always trying to do some burning if we can. Um, we do have some slash piles that need to be burned um, in the cabin gulch area, uh, so it's kind of heads up. You could be seeing some smoke um, or not. Hard to say. It depends on the weather. So, um, tied to Cabin Gulch, um, RY timber is is just about done with the commercial side of the um, harvest timber harvest. They, from what I understand, they've completed all of their um, cutting. They've completed all of the logging, and all they need to do is just haul, do some hauling. Um, and right now they're on a temporary closure because we we pause. Uh, ground disturbing activities for the first two weeks of rifle season to try to minimize impacts with the public. Um, and so there's no activities going on there right now, but after two weeks they'll get going again and I don't think they have a whole lot left to haul. And then they'll, they are why will be done and cabin gulch will be done um, with all of the, the mature timber harvest uh, commercial work in there. So um, been, a, been a good project and we still have a lot of other things to do. We'll have a lot of Prescribed fire, we've got some road decommissioning, some road maintenance, we'll be spraying weeds in there for quite a while. Um, those activities will be ongoing for the next couple of years, but from the timber perspective, it'll be pretty well buttoned up here in the next few weeks. So, um, tied to Cabin Gulch, uh, for folks, um, so we, we got litigated on Cabin Gulch about two and a half years ago, and I was with the district court and the district court ruled in favor of the Forest Service, and so we were able to implement that project. The litigants then appealed and went to the Ninth Circuit Court, um, and that was uh, pending in the Ninth Circuit Court for the last two years. And as long as it's pending, we can continue to operate, and so we have continued to operate. And the Ninth Circuit Court, uh, Seattle, just picked up the, the case and had a hearing two Fridays ago, I think. It was two, three Fridays ago. And all they did is listen to both sides, and we haven't heard anything since. It was just a hearing. Um, we haven't had any kind of a ruling. Um, but it'll be kind of interesting how that uh, plays out. But I'll keep you guys posted uh, when that information does come out. But again, we're able to continue to implement um, until the court actually provides a, um, a finding or something. So, Isn't it moved by now? Or? Well, not quite. It should be. But um, we, we still had a... We considered making that argument, but because we were technically, when the when the court heard it, we were still actually logging just a little bit left. We had one unit left, um, and so although 98% of of the mature timber work is pretty much already completed, 
um, they, we still moved forward with the hearing the Ninth Circuit Court did. So we could not we could not make a mute a moot calling. But maybe just today. Maybe well probably yeah, probably could now. So <laughs> pretty pretty close actually. So um, let's see, so another heads up, um, the limestone hills firing range. I think we've talked off and on over the last couple of summers that we had been working with the DOD to maybe come up with an agreement to provide suppression activities. And uh, for a variety of reasons, that didn't happen last year. And so they, they had been just seeking, uh, relying purely on Broadwater County to provide those. Um, if, if they requested it, Broadwater County would be the resource. Um, it sounds like they're interested in kind of renegotiating with us and, and wanting to have some discussions. So we're actually meeting this week to maybe pick up those draft agreements and, and maybe we will put something on paper where, where the Forest Service will be responsible for uh, fire suppression on limestone hills, which would be good, I think. It makes sense across the board for lots of reasons. But um, So just, you know, like I said, we're, we're going to meet on Wednesday and we'll see how those go. We're, we're hoping we're going to be able to get those pushed through and signed and we will not have to worry about it anymore. So. Uh, other summer kind of activities would be you know, a busy summer. We got, you know, contrary to what Adam may say, we did do road maintenance. <laughs> We did what we could do. Uh, don't touch you. Never, never, we never hear about it. Uh, I am one of the game wardens was talking about the need for chiropractic adjustment after driving on Forest Street. <laughs> well, that probably will, it'll, it'll help. It's a massage. Uh, so we got some roads. Most of our road maintenance this year uh, focused in the big belts. Um, some of the Duck Creek, and we did Cabin Gold, we did Sulphur Bar. Um, avalanche, can't remember, but we, you know, several miles there. Um, but we had a good yard trail crew, got lots of, most of our trails all cleared, and, you know, unfortunately, they'll spend a week clearing a trail, then the next week there could be several more trees on it, but um, this was a dead lodge pole. But we got uh, a lot of miles done this year, had an MCC project in the big belts on the east side, uh, bridge replacement in Birch Basin. That went really well, it was a good project, so um, good, good field season. Uh, very little to no fire activity, as I'm sure most folks know. We had a couple small lightning fires, human cost fires here and there, but nothing substantial. So our, our folks were busy, the fire crews were busy in other, other places of the country. I mean, they actually got a lot of assignments. Um, so when we're not too busy here, they're somewhere else usually. So, uh, but most of our crews are gone now. We've got just a, a real small handful of our seasonal still here, kind of helping do some burning. They'll be here the next couple of weeks, and then most of our seasonal fire crews will be gone. Um, so that's that. Uh, so some good news, if you probably read it in the paper, but if, do you guys remember Miller Cabin up in Confederate Gulch? So uh, great partnership project. I, I can't remember. I know uh, BCDC was involved. There's a lot of partners involved, and we just got that added to the rental system about a month ago. Nice. And so it is now available for rent. Uh, I think the... You know, if people were ready to rent it, and it still wasn't, you know, we were waiting for the, the website and the recreation.gov to get everything up there, and, and it was, people were waiting. The second it was available, they were going to get on there and, and rent it. So uh, that's pretty exciting. We're, that's that's a good use um, on the district. That's our fifth cabin we, we, on Towns Ranger District, and they, they do they get a lot of use, and I'm sure it's going to be pretty busy throughout hunting season and rifle season. And, um, so pretty pretty neat. And if, if I want to get, get together with some of the partners, but maybe in the spring, we'll look at um, trying to kind of host a kind of a celebration party, celebration meeting or something up there at the cabin with all the partners who are involved. And um, it was a pretty neat project, just from start to finish, all the, the volunteers and all the partnership work. And you kind of need to highlight that, I think. So, um, so yeah, recreation.gut if you want to rent it out. Um, then the last main thing I've got as kind of a heads up, so we are considering uh, starting a, uh, implementing a bear order in the Elkhorns and the Big Belt Mountain Range uh, next year. Um, be a, a, a food, I'm sorry, a food storage order um, for bears. So a lot of the mountain ranges have food storage orders in place. Um, the Big Belts do not and the Elkhorns do not. Um, and we've definitely had conflict with black bears over the years. Um, we continue to have um, some challenges just with, with this first camping and garbage left behind. Um, and then correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, but I believe it's 
um, highly encouraged with some of the recovery efforts that I forget what zones these are, but the Elkhorns and the Big Belts are uh, recommended to go food storage order, if I remember correctly. Is that right? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Under the, you're talking about the grizzly bears? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Remember what? I don't have the details on okay. the top of my head on that or whatever and stuff like that. So, so it's something something that we're, we're looking at. And um, if we do move forward to implement, that would be starting next year, 2017. There'll be more information coming out probably over the course of the winter, but it's kind of a heads up on that. Um, and then the last thing I have is I guess kind of more of a count, uh, question from you guys, but did, did you guys go to the county? The Forest Summit? Forest Summit last week? Yeah. Uh, I made it to one of the, oh, the right. sessions. Okay, yeah. yeah. That was it, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I couldn't make it either. I didn't go, but. It, it looked excellent. Oh, Great yeah. agenda. Um, and Matt Arnold wants mm -hmm. to come and meet you guys oh, cool. as well. Uh, he was hired, the legislature passed a bill, 512, I think, in the last session, and they gave a Forest Service liaison to counties to uh, help facilitate mm -hmm. what we're doing here today between counties and the Forest Service, mm -hmm. and it's worked really well. Cool. So, yeah. Cool. Looked like a good agenda. I, I was curious if you went, I couldn't make it, but I'll try to yeah. make it next year. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's just, it's a hard time of it's year. Tough. There's a lot going on. Tough time of year. Yeah. For a whole week like that, or almost, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's all I got, though. Uh, update on Crow Creek, the veg project. I think they're supposed to ask questions. What's it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're supposed to ask questions, no. Um, yeah, thanks for the reminder. So we have a, we've talked uh, off and on the last couple times we've been here. We have a large, um, wildlife enhancement project, vegetation project that we're uh, analyzing for the Crow Creek, South Elkhorn country. Um, it's a lot of conifer encroachment, um, prescribed fire burning, uh, aspen regeneration work. And we're really close at making a decision. We're kind of just buttoning up the project record and the final reports. Uh, we've, a lot of our specialists that are trying to finish this project um, are also working on some other priority projects on the forest, specifically our, our telegraph project. And then also uh, where we're at with our 10 mile watershed project, both of those are in the Helena Range District. Um, and so some of those folks are getting kind of pulled away at the moment to try to get those uh, across the finish line some of those projects. But I would, I would, you know, next, the next month hopefully, um, I've been saying that for quite a while now and I, I, can, uh, I think we said, hard time what we said last, but I know you remember. But, um, so sometime, sometime this winter, um, maybe I should just keep it at that. But We'll have a decision signed, and then we'll be looking to do implementation, start implementation next summer, and it'll be a multi-year project. I mean, it's got a lot of different prescribed fire, a lot of, um, a lot of enhancement projects that will take multiple years to implement. Um, it's a great project. We're, we're really excited about it. Worked um, uh, with the Elkhorn Restoration Committee. Um, Adam's been really involved, Fish and Wildlife, providing input and, and recommendations on what we think is some of the best steps to, to try to keep the habitat in good shape. So we're excited about it. I think it's going to be a really good project. And sooner than later, we'll have a decision signed, um, hopefully in the next few weeks. And that'll be, that'll be done. That's excellent. Good question, though. Yeah, you'd be on your toes. I know, I know. <laughs> I want to slide. But. Hey, Corey, I understand there was a, um, a logging project that got no bids for it. Do you know mm -hmm. anything about that on the Helena? So there was a, a project on the Lewis and Clark part of the Helena okay. uh, that I don't know all the details because it's, it's on the uh, White, Swift, White Swift Springs um, Ranger District, but there was a bid project that it, the way it was advertised was advertised uh, for a uh, specific logging spectrum, you know, uh, uh, um, product and they didn't get any bids. And so I do know that our timber shop is reworking that package. Okay. Um, and it's we're gonna try to go out and re-advertise that um, with some uh, better alternatives to make it a little bit more compelling for the market and try to get uh, some actual bids on it. And we, we think we will this next time. Okay. We've got, we think we're gonna be able to repackage that to, to make it a little bit more effective. So I'm assuming that's what you're probably referring to. Yeah, there were two of them, and one was on the Helena, and the other one was your lodge? 
So and when, you, George, what, George? when you say Helena, you mean Helena Lewis and Clark, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so the one on the on Helena Lewis and Clark is the one over in White Spring Springs. Okay. I'm not familiar with the one in Deer Lodge. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. I, I didn't assume it would be. Yeah. yeah. But I know it, it had something to do with, you know, it was, a, it was a long, the way it was advertised for the product that was advertised and the amount of hauling that would have been required uh, um, just wasn't uh, as feasible as we thought it would be. So it didn't get any bids. So we're repackaging some of that, and, and we'll think we'll be in a better position. And I think it's supposed to be re-advertised here. Well, sure. they take it out like beetle kill. It was or? yeah, beetle kill, and um, I'm trying to. I should know this. Um, it was it was targeted for a specific type of meal activity, um, and it was it wasn't feasible for that type of meal. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. So, but yeah, I think it's, they were just talking about it last week. I think it's supposed to be re-advertised here in the short term, here in the near future. Okay. So. All right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Any questions? Recorded? Franklin? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Looks like the first one here is the last, <coughs> last to go, Scott. All right. Well, <coughs> let's do these. Um, <coughs> our travel management plan for the... Park, Gallatin, and Broadwater South is ready to go. It's been out for public comment. We've had a big uh, open house meeting down in three courts last August. <clears throat> Got a lot of comments on it, but almost all of them were surrounding the Copper City um, mountain bike trail system that's been proposed. So um, ready to sign that either end of this week or first of next week. And so you can look for that decision to come out. Um, we had a lot of comments in support of the system. We had a few people that commented concerned because it's also used so much for shooting. And mm -hmm. so we've taken a look at that and thought, well, where could we kind of screen the trail system from areas where we know people shoot? But you, know, you can't mitigate that 100%. And, and you know, people are going to have to take responsibility for where they shoot and what the backdrop is and everything else. So, so we're going we're gonna to go ahead and, and sign that travel plan here real soon. And then, of course, implementation is subject to any appeals we might get. So we'll see. Um, in the Iron Mask area, we've uh, you know, out there. That's that area to the to the west of White Horse Lane that we acquired. Oh, it's like 2007. We got a, a trailhead established in that travel plan. We looked to actually construct something this spring in cooperation with Rocky Mountain Health Foundation trailhead kiosk. Hopefully, make it you know, large enough you can pull a horse trailer in there and, and offload, and if you can access that area, then we'll be walk in or ride in from there. We're also proceeding with the forage reserve allotment, and if, to refresh your memory, that's an allotment we designated where you can actually, you know, if, if there's another, say, vegetation improvement project elsewhere in the Elkhorn, you can, you know, bring your cattle there and they can get you know, grazed while that. Um, with the home range as being a vegetation treatment support. It's open to either BLM or Forest Service permittees, and we're pretty excited about that, but there's a lot of infrastructure we need to put in there, some spring developments, some fencing, that type of stuff. So we're going to proceed with that. Even though it is under appeal, it has not been stayed, so we're just going to go forward this, this next year with that. I think one of those is we're rebuilding that boundary fence between mm -hmm. BLM and Forest Service. I think we've got the funds set aside now. Great IGO for that. Or okay. So yeah. we'll be doing that. Okay. We also are doing 5,400 acres of conifer encroachment removal. And last year we did 526 acres um, out there mechanical treatment. Uh, we'll probably do about that every year you know, for the future. And then there's about 1,000 acres for prescribed fire. And that'll happen probably not this spring, but the spring after next. Proceeding with that, um, we've, we've issued three out of the four grazing permit renewal decisions for the Limestone Hills training area. That's that National Guard area. You know, they got the land, but we also had to keep managing the grazing and the mining. So I don't think a lot's changed for, for us. <laughs> we, get, we get the two biggest workload items. Are we? <laughs> so we've got those uh, those ready to go. We're trying to work on some language. The guard wants some language in there about um, safety and UXO, and you know, permittees have to take a certain amount of training before they can go out there. And, and we're in that area just to the west of, of um, 
Old Woman Graves Road, some of the most, uh, where the USO is the highest concentration. Um, oh, and we got, in our budget this year, we kind of got a surprise. We got $25,000 to help stabilize the Johnson Stamp Mill. It's an old stamp mill up Indian Creek. And we had a lot of people that were pushing on that. Um, you know, some folks from the Historical Society here in town. Uh, Paul Putz, you may know him. He's, he's a former shippo and he lives here in Townsend. And Larry Hoffman's a uh, old time underground miner, works, works out of Butte. And he runs kind of that in, underground training uh, facility up there at Montana Tech. So. We got that money and I pushed the uh, Resource Advisory Council last week. That's um, a spectrum of people. Nicole Brown is on that um, for Baltimore County. So I've got Larry, Paul, and Nicole drafted to help me figure out how to spend that money. You know, what exactly are we going to do now that everybody, everybody was excited we needed to stabilize it, but nobody knows quite how to do it. So, okay. You know, tell us what kind of plan we need. So we're working on that. Um, you might see some, some paleontologists around town. We did sign a paleo permit for some BLM land there between, kind of between the highway and Canyon Ferry on the, on the west side there. And they're going to be out there doing, they've got a couple of fossil sites they want to excavate, so. Where is that at? It's on the west side of Canyon Ferry between there and the highway. There's a couple parcels of BLM there. Okay. That one partial just south of the silos? Is that? No, it's up north. I think that's right. There's yeah. a spot there. Yeah. What's that? There's a spot on reclamation land where they like to go once in a while. Oh, yeah. So this one is north of the silos? North of the silos. Okay. okay. Yeah. What, what, are, what are they interested in? Do you know? Well, they, they mentioned uh, mammal fossils. They found some. Oh. Yeah, some Mammoth? Mammal. 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 Okay. Could be mammal. But, right, that would be pretty. But the Pleistocene type of era, not not dinosaurs necessarily. Yeah. So. Okay. We found a, a bone years ago, and we went down to Bozeman to the museum, mm -hmm. and we went downstairs where they keep all the bones. Mm -hmm. They had literally two walls of two or two layers of shells on one of the long walls. It was all Broadwater County, oh, we got it. and it's mostly wow. the east side of the lake, and it's um, kind of a dog, a, a pig-type dog, and it's prehistoric. Oh. Oh, yeah, God. and they, it's just littered with them out there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was very cool. So they were pretty excited. Um, Jack That's Warner exciting. actually came in and got the permit. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Yeah. It takes something significant to get his attention. So. Mm -hmm. Very cool. We know. I know. <laughs> I don't think that's probably an issue for you guys. But that's just a yeah. wild guess. No. <laughs> Dead wildlife. I don't know. It's, it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't deal with stuff that's been dead for that long. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only other thing I wanted to ask you about is, is we talked last time about what it, what it would take to to get that white horse lane designated as a county road out to be on them. I guess I never did figure out what the process was or what we need to do or if you think it's feasible, not feasible, a good idea, bad idea. Um, there are some citizens who are interested in that, and I would say your largest block are the folks that live on that road. Okay. Um, all we need to do, and, and Anne, you probably have the most experience of anyone, <coughs> Cole would be another one, but um, petition, and then we just have a public hearing to hear public comment, and then we can render a decision on that. Um, so for some of our roads, they have to be brought up to county specs. That would be have something we have to look at. But that road is fairly close to that. So we want Dana probably to take a look at it. But it shouldn't be a hard process, at least to address. Um, is that something we would initiate? You know, and on the rack, Nicole could initiate that. Yeah. Um, I think Nicole would be your best bet um, to talk to her about that. She could send letters to the homeowners that live off of that road, and then um, she could start the petition. Are, are you talking about the road that goes to the new mm -hmm. Iron Mass Trailhead you're putting right. on? The road between that and the highway is Whitehart Horse Road. Yeah. It's not a county road. Oh, it's right. a public road, but it's not a county road. Huh. 
Yeah. So, so who, I guess I'm like, so then who's responsible for me? Nobody. But it's a public road. Right. Public roads are not the responsibility of the county. Anybody can travel on them, but essentially there's no responsibility on that road. Yeah. So until we designated a county road, there would be nobody charged with maintaining that road to that trail bed. And it's not considered a BLM road in. Not until it gets to BLM. Well, okay. We don't have any easement or any sort of ownership. And out there in no man's land. Or yeah. Or something. yeah. But we have no less than 30 people who live off of that road who are very frustrated yeah. by the conditions of that road. Yeah. They didn't realize or weren't advised when they bought that it was a public road and not a county road. So we've heard a lot from them over the years about the wanting grading and snow plowing and yeah. maintenance. So where does the public road definition come from then? Uh, it's just an MCA. Um, how it started, I don't know. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly what your question is. Well, I guess I'm curious if, if no one's claiming ownership to it, Road to then wouldn't it be it wouldn't it be owned by the, by the private landowners then? Essentially, yes. It is. So it's just interesting though that so but it's open to the public. Exactly. But That's that, where it gets. If more that landowner wants to close the road or put a gate on it, or kind of like a subdivision. Well, there's there's no way everybody okay. Good. An easement in there then. Yeah. No. So there's private roads right. which you could gate. Yep. Public roads which anybody can use and you. There's just no actual, say, okay. right? Yeah. Or a county. Yeah. Yeah. My concern is if we, we put all the money into the trailhead there and we get you know, a lot of traffic out there, that you know, first off, the road is decent for people to get out there, and second, that that someone's kind of looking at that railroad crossing and making sure that it meets some sort of standards, and I don't know what those standards are, but I assume the county has standards for railroad crossings. Yeah, that'd be strictly railroad. Well, how do you? I mean, the county not the railroad anything. But you would, if the road, if the county road crossed the railroad. Depends which one was there first. Who's had first? This problem yeah. before if whoever was there first. The other people have to work around. It. Right. The road's already crosses the railroad tracks. If the railroad track was there before the road, right? Then the road that crossed the track has to work around the railroad. And then working around, you can work with. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think around it. It'd be a long loop. It'd be a really long We did put some stop signs out there on that crossing. Okay. Just because. Well, I think that's what most of the crossings have, too. Right. So I don't think if there was a requirement in the arms. Talk about that, that's, story. that's a budget buster. Right, it is. Yeah. yeah. But um, no, um, we can talk to Nicole, okay. and I'll give her your number. And I know you guys have talked a lot right. before. So yeah, I would say she's your best contact for that. Okay, great. Yeah, right, thank, you. thank you. And that's all I have. Any other questions? Or Thank you. That's some exciting news about that. I'm curious about that mammal. So if you have any more information yeah, you can I, send me. I am too. I, I said send some pictures. Yeah. yeah. Of course, they're real secretive about exactly where they are. They sure. Weren't. Of course. I just got to the nearest square mile. So. We, we're not looking at another. Is it Susie? Pardon me? Is it Susie, the big... Um, oh, the T-Rex? Yes. The, yeah. yeah. Well, it would be nice, but I don't think so. Yeah. Been in the courthouse. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm in the clerk and recorder's office. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Any questions then for Scott or any further comments? Um, I forgot something about uh, Goose Bay. We sent out notice that Goose Bay will be new construction, ongoing construction with Boatway Marine. It'll be shut down. For vehicular traffic over the winter, uh, there's a fence, there's a gate out there. You can only walk around the gate if you want to walk in here, but there's a gate out there to uh, keep vehicles out. Um, and on that note, it's looking good for them to have some kind of a fueling station next spring. Wow. That's the only fuel on the southern part of the lake, too. 
right? But it's looking good for them to have a fueling station next spring. Um, other than that, is everything done now at Goose Bay or other than the fueling station? They're still bringing in some uh, slips. Yeah. They've got the gangway, but the, they're still assembling the, the docks. And so is, is it open for public use then or yet? Or it will be next spring. Okay. It, it was, but during the winter we needed to shut it down for okay. various reasons. It will be open again. Yeah, we're still having a problem with gangplank going down to slip the dock or sits down the slip. Some engineering issues. Okay. So we basically had to store that ramp on a, or that gangplank on the ramp for now. And we just don't want people down there getting hurt or anything. So, all right, fine, just shut it down this year. I mean, they can walk in if they want, but it's quite a long walk. Um, there'll be some ongoing improvements going on down there. So anyway, we'll be revisiting White Earth next fall. There's some trees and, and sprinkler systems up there, drip sprinkler systems. We will be going back here again. Uh, but, we're, yeah, we're just kind of like out of time right now. Out of time or out of manpower. Um, MCC crews were over there helping us a lot. Three or four weeks, whatever it was. Are you guys going to be planting trees out at White Earth or something? Yeah. Yeah, I recommend strongly that you um, put some sort of protecting around them. Where there's, there's not mill deer and white deer, white tail deer out there, they'll oh, yeah. eat, Tear if you don't, yeah, if you don't have some sort of something to protect them, they'll just get munched off. PVC pipe or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a the dates for Goose Bay, was that set by BOR or by the concessionaire? The dates of closure, I know they closed, I think it was October 1st. It's part of the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, there's Steve, but it's part of the agreement we entered into at the concessionaire, they have to stay open so long, certain okay. period in between certain dates. Okay. And typically it goes from May 1st through the end of uh, September. Okay. Plus or minus. That's, of course, the recreation season, that covers the whole recreation season. Just, this is just an aside, but we have, you know, very little hotel room space. And Fall Fest, we bring eight, ten thousand people to town. We had some people expecting to stay at Goose Bay, and I called and I said, I asked them if I could put their phone number on our advertising, and they were closing the day before Fall Fest. Mm -hmm. That could be some good business for Goose Bay if they were open. They're just 30 miles away. So just a thought um, for you guys negotiating with them. We'll pass that on to Esther. I, I think she's got some some plans. She, she's always thinking. She's always thinking. So Excellent. Um, and yeah. it looks positive for the flat grant, too. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So we haven't heard officially back yet, but we did hear see some emails about the traffic counts. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it looks good. Good. We entered into the Federal Lands Access mm -hmm. Program with Goose Bay Road as partners with BOR. And uh, we, we, for one of the reviewers, we were number one. Oh, and the rest of the team seems to be very positive oh, in a personal meeting with them. And the plan is that they'll pay uh, Goose Bay Road. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. But these guys are going to pay for the engineering, essentially, and we're going to pay for some of the prep work. Mm -hmm. And then the bulk of it's picked up by the feds. Oh. Yeah. So it should be a good thing. Mm -hmm. And anything else? Anything else forgotten? All right. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, thank Do you. we want to, since we don't have to worry about forest fires, true. we want to schedule right now for three months from now? Sure. sure. Okay. So it's, um, we're in October, yeah, it's mine too. November, December, January, end of January? Does that work? That'd be good. Okay. Yeah, stay away from the 18th. I think I just skipped a little bit. I said in the Oh, the Woodridge. Okay, yeah, so I'll have that. Well, that won't be too easy. Well, Monday, Monday or the 23rd. Monday or what day? 
Monday, January 23rd. 21st? 23rd. 23rd. Or 23rd? Yeah. They're pulling my glass. There's that, good Mondays are kind of a good day for you guys. You bet. Okay. Yeah. So Monday, January 23rd, 2 o'clock, same place. All right. Is that a holiday? No. No, the <laughs> Monday before is a holiday. Sixteen is a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we got all them holidays. You know. it might even be a state holiday too. The week before. Yeah. All right. All right. Very good. Do you guys get election day? Nope. Oh, too bad. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously you do. <laughs> you have election day? We, we can't. We do. Really? Every the like every two years, the congressional president. You can only vote once every two years. Yeah. Exactly. So, all day to make up their minds. That's right. Well, there's nothing leading up to it. I have no information to go on. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get here fast enough. I'm tired of commercials and. Uh, yeah, my TV is off. Yeah. <laughs> Not even going on. question for you. Yeah. 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 What do you well, good to see uh, you guys? Yeah. 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 Some of the block man, you know, probably one of that area down, some of the block management areas down there are over it. Make sure there's tons of white tails. Yeah, should we pick whatever? Are we, we going to do this or is that? I don't know. <laughs> and everything like that. So, All right. You guys. Hey, you too. You take care of yourself. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be in touch with the whole agreement. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we probably do. I don't think we're going to kick off the other. We'll have to set a date on that. I'm going to be. I don't think we've got a date. Yeah, it looks like we lost another commissioner. No, I got another meeting. So, hey, it looks like we're access. 